McMahon Stadium, an odd place to talk about the Calgary Saddle Dome, but that's where we are today. It's Phoenix for Shaw TV. Now, why are we here at McMahon? Because in a few moments, Ken King will talk about the status of the Saddle Dome. It's wet there. It's well, it's populated with water, or at least those are the rumors. Rumors dispelled. We're going to find out in the press conference. Have a look. Firstly, I would like on behalf of our organization and all our sports organizations to express uh, great sympathy uh, for the loss of life to those people uh, who had that great tragedy and to everyone in this city who is facing many, many more challenges than we are down at the Saddle Dome. Ours is a piece of real estate. It's a building. But there are many people's lives that have been dramatically altered here. And on behalf of the Calgary Flames and Calgary Sports and Entertainment Corporation, I want to express our heartfelt uh, sympathy and outreach to those people. Um, Friday night, uh, as, uh, as this entire city did, we were shocked and surprised when, uh, when the flood came. It didn't come as a surprise that it was coming, but the depth uh, of the devastation was... Uh, was uh, unbelievable. We prepared as best we could. We cleared uh, some of our event level material, uh, not all of it. And uh, and uh, Libby and Bob Godin and some of our staff stayed till about three o'clock in the morning until it was time for them to evacuate. Libby and Bob and I went back in yesterday and today, and it's a mess. Um, the the tales of up to row uh, eight or nine are absolutely true. Uh, it sits at now about row eight. And uh, if you put that in perspective from the event level, that means that if you were a hockey player walking out on the tunnel onto the ice, you would be underwater yourself because, of course, row eight is, is above that. Um, it is a total loss on the event level. Um, and to the degree that it is uh, greater than that, uh, we do not know, obviously. Um, we have uh, we have been watching. We have uh, we had a recovery action plan put in place uh, immediately. Our executive group group met uh, this morning uh, and went through a number of tasks, as you can expect, for everything from dealing with our staff communication to shareholder communication, stakeholder communication, and uh, and what we're going to do to recover this building as quick as possible. Um, we have equipment, uh, the biggest. Uh, water pumps in North America uh, on standby for us, and many of them. And uh, we have people on standby to go to work, but they can only go to work and the equipment can only be put in place once uh, we see uh, the river subside and obviously the flood damage subside from our building. But we are ready to go. Our first events, and we have a series of firsts, um, and, and our first event is an agriculture event for the Stampede followed obviously by uh, an, a various and significant events that will take place. Our first uh, football game is this Friday, our first regular season football game obviously, and, uh, and from a food preparation standpoint, that type of thing, we're making alternate arrangements, and, uh, and of course this football game will, will obviously go on because this facility is, is ready for it. Our first hockey game, our first junior game, our first NHL game, uh, obviously, you know when those are going to take place are going to uh, are going to be in the path of uh, of what we're trying to put back together. I spoke with David Poyle in Nashville, and, and some of you may not recall that they had a similar but not as serious situation. And I asked David on their recovery plan, and and he said they had to work very hard uh, in order to get ready for the first game of their season, and and their problem occurred about May. So. Libby and our group and, uh, and all of our contractors have got a full load of work to do. We'll obviously be able to do some things uh, uh, before the start of the season, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a full, full load. We want to thank our Stampede neighbors um, and, uh, who have as big or greater problems that we do and, and thank uh, lots of people who have uh, provided outreach, including those people volunteering with equipment and different things. Um, we want to ask uh, all of you and obviously all of our staff and anybody else to not come uh, near the building because it is n it's not safe and it's not a place to be and of course the mayor quite appropriately is asking people to stay out of the downtown area anyway and we certainly would be included in that. 
We have uh, shot some video for you and some digital photography, which will be made available to you shortly after this session. And, uh, and uh, regret uh, that while we know that you would want to get in there and get your own stuff, it's, it's just not uh, appropriate for that to happen right now. Um, so with that, I'll open it to questions either to myself or to Libby Rains, and, uh, and the, uh, turn it over to, your, to you. No, uh, Mr. Bettman called and offered his uh, his uh, his assistance in whatever uh, capacity that could take place, as did Mark Cohan, I might add, uh, the commissioner of the CFL. Um, but no, um, we're going to be ready for the opening of the season. Can you give us an idea of what you were able to save? Uh, it's a total loss. No. There was nothing saved. There was some nominal uh, movable memorabilia, uh, but the electronics um, that uh, that operate. There was a there was I think a myth going around that the jumbotron was on the floor and was covered. That is not accurate. Uh, but all of the mechanical equipment um, in of all nature, including the equipment that drives all our jumbotron equipment, is at this moment under about 15 feet of water and not salvageable, obviously. We, we believe that our insurance is full and intact and will cover us for this eventuality. And, it, and we are in contact with our insurance company, obviously. Because of the, uh, the, the plans that need to be put in place and the authorizations that are necessary, we're ready to go and, uh, and, and we're not waiting. We're ordering everything, including hockey equipment, right now. Um, we have a, uh, a camp coming up, obviously. Uh, that we need to get ready for, and there's there isn't any of that material that's available to us. So we're not waiting for the insurance company. They've been notified. Uh, they're working on it, and, and we're working on it as well. Are you confident there will be no delay in that? You'll be able to. We need to. We need to to move with great haste. Uh, uh, whatever that contractual situation is, and will. Yeah, we'll have it. We'll have it all looked at. We'll get our consultants in and and uh, make sure we take a thorough look at the building. Obviously, that has to wait until we get the water out. But we're we're at this point, um, co you know, fairly confident that we we should be structurally intact. And but again, we'll we'll have that all looked at. Notwithstanding my lack of clairvoyancy, that's our goal and our objective. If something comes between us and that that we're unaware of, but um, and, and appreciate that we don't know what's under there at this point. Um, but uh, but one would conclude that uh, the quicker we can get in there and start pumping water and, and get to work, the quicker we'll be able to answer that question with certainty. But but our goal and objective obviously has to be to to be in there. Yeah. We didn't have that discussion. We're not at that point yet. I think it would be premature to, to deal with that now, but obviously, if necessary. Uh, we know this about uh, the situation in Boston and, and any other catastrophes that have, that have befell the league. They, they're wonderful to work with. They'll, they'll do anything they can to, to adjust schedules in order to make things work. None whatsoever. I, I can't comprehend what it might uh, 
what the quantum might be. And no time estimate as to when you can get it and start pumping. No, uh, you're you're all listening every day or every hour, every half an hour, and and doing a wonderful job, I might add, in yourself in terms of communicating that. But we're in the same situation you are. We're obviously Libby and the group are in close contact with the command center at Stampede Grounds, and in close contact with the city of Calgary officials, and uh, and we're where you are, waiting for abatement of the weather and of the river. Z. I, I, uh, Scott, I, I don't think it affects it at all. We need to put the building back into service in the event that we were to begin construction of a new building today. That's probably a two and a half to three year process. And, and you couldn't partially put this building back into service waiting for that new building. So I, I don't think it's germane to that discussion. Well, Jim Poplinski's contract got saved, uh, um, and some uh, some memorabilia. But any fixed assets, um, uh, there were some electronics that were moved up a few feet, uh, and obviously, uh, and and that was done in a in a great rush. Um, so uh, uh, as many bodies as were able were were in there moving things, but no one. Uh, I don't think in the city anticipated uh, the gravity of, of this flood and, and where it would get to this, this to, to when you see the photos and the video of it and, um, and if you were ever in a position to see it, it's very difficult to describe uh, millions of gallons of water sitting in that building. The stage is floating, um, the dressing room uh, is the Hitman and Flames restroom was totally submerged. Obviously, anything on that level, our kitchens are, are completely underwater. Everything that happens on the event level is yeah, drowned. Like Everything. We are. In fact, um, we spoke with our uh, associates here. And on Monday morning at 9 o'clock, our recovery action plan group will meet here. And all of our staff that are able and not able to work from home will, will be mustered here. Uh, John Haverstock of the McMahon Stadium Society has been gracious enough to give us space. There is Stampede off, Stampeder office administration space that's available to us, including boardrooms. So we'll be mostly here. We have had um, another offer, but it was a downtown office space which makes it a little more complicated. So, so we're blessed to have our association with the Stampeders and, and immediately rely on them um, for a place to operate. There's been an inquiry from some members of the public, fans, I take it. They want to know if the organization would welcome any help from the community in terms of when you get into the building and you need assistance in any capacity. What do you say to that? I think it's wonderful and I think it's a great tribute to the people of Calgary. I think you're seeing that everywhere. Great outreach from people saying, what can I do? Uh, in our case, uh, right now, there's very little that can be done and, and to what degree volunteers would would be helpful, we'll understand a little later and, and use them. And, and I, I don't think it's surprising you've got such great and dedicated loyal fans that they'd want to help out. Uh, and I think it's a marvelous gesture. We, we will uh, record and attempt to understand who that might be and, and how they might help. We can just reinforce at this point, if just please stay away from the site. There's a lot of heavy equipment moving around, um, both for the Stampede and ourselves uh, at this point. We really appreciate so many people want to come out and help. When that time comes, believe me, we'll find a way to get that message out. Right now, the message we really want to put out there is to, to please just try and stay away from the site while, while the heavy part of that recovery and the heavy equipment is out there working and uh, then when it's safe <coughs> safe to come which we're all hoping is July 5th come on down but um, I, yeah, I think that's a message we'd like to I, I think it's really important it's also important to understand that when the exterior looks like it's okay the interior is going to be under pumps 
Um, so so don't don't be deceived by a by a, an extra a dry exterior and, and parking lots and that type of thing. The interiors where the damage is obviously and that's going to be a while. Libby, what are, what are the basics of the checklist um, Libby. that you're going to have to go through once you have the opportunity to get in that saddle room? I know you mentioned structure and please include that as well, but what are the basics of the checklist you will have to look at things when you get into that building? Well, once, I mean, obviously the first thing, the first order of business is the water is, is receding now. Um, We'll see how that continues. Then once we can uh, get the word that we can get the pumps in and, and we have them available here, we'll get that done. Uh, then, of course, there will be an inspection, um, uh, looking at all the structural, looking at the slab. Um, then we'll be in checking out things like uh, the ice plant. Um, obviously, we're uh, anything in the dressing rooms, uh, our jumbotron room, all the electrical equipment in there, uh, all the camera equipment, probably toast, but we'll do a full inventory of all of that. All of our uniforms are down below, of course, our, our main kitchens. So just looking at all the equipment, all of our people now are uh, diligently working at, at um, inventorying and identifying all of the equipment that they had there, what we need to replace, what needs to be looked at, um, sourcing that, getting timelines, getting all that information together. That work is ongoing now. So that's all being done. Um, and then it's, you know, recovery and restoration, and off we go. Uh, our objective is to try and get the building ready for the upcoming events, and then uh, to slowly build out from around that, get those basics done, and then uh, get everything ready so that we're ready to go um, when the season starts. Uh, everybody, it's a, it's a wonderful fraternity and a great outreach uh, in professional sports, and, and we've had lots of calls and lots of uh, volunteers in terms of, of equipment and, and different things that, that we might be able to need and use. So it's it's been very gratifying. And our building our building colleagues as well are all calling in and offering whatever service they can. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the first event. everything still on until you say cancel or are there obvious cancellations that's our goal and our objective that's that's a move in that's nine days from now yeah. um, um, that may seem a, 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 a ludicrously ambitious but this is Calgary and Libby and her group and and the, and the, uh, the staff charged with that are gonna move heaven and earth to try and do it They've, uh, the Stampede, for their purposes, have laid in uh, uh, significant generators for power. Uh, it, it's highly unlikely that we'll be able to power up, but with, uh, with uh, 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 mobile generators, uh, they, can, they can get enough power for it. The, the question is, can we get the facility ready to receive that? Thank you.